A hulking creature of indescribable disgust pulled itself up the side of the mountain. It, however, was only one, and we were six. It wasn't until I saw what emerged from its horrid body that I began to feel fear. Welcome everybody to what is sure to be the most disgusting episode of Monster of the Week thus far. This week, we are talking about the Pod Demon. This is not only the first demon, but also the first creature exclusively from 4th edition that I've done on this show, and as such, it was not easy to convert. I'm still kind of working out my method for converting 4th edition creatures, but the conversion in the description below should at least give you a good starting point for these guys. If you want to take a look at the original monster, you can find it in 4th edition's Monster Manual 2. As always, we're going to talk about just what this monster is, what it's capable of, how it does battle, and of course some ways you can use it in your game and maybe some changes you can make to make it fit a little bit better. So, first things first, what in the nine hells is that thing? Well folks, this cute little fella is the Pod Demon. They are 10 foot tall humanoid creatures that are just covered in these disgusting cysts. They have enormous bulging eyes and huge fists that reach all the way down to the ground. And those cysts I mentioned, they're not just for show. The growths on the pod demon's body actually act as a sort of incubation chamber. This demon actually creates smaller versions of itself called pod spawn, and it does so by ejecting them from its body through these growths. Basically, it's like popping the most horrific pimple in the world. The pod demon can have up to four spawns active at one time, and this is where things start to become a little bit challenging for your players. The pod demon itself is a fairly powerful slam attack that can and will inflict poison damage, However, it's nothing compared to the damage outputted by the little guys. The pod spawn have one attack, and it's called Corroding Slime. Basically, they just try to coat whatever they can with this goop that does acid damage every turn. This is pretty standard for minion type creatures like this. However, they do also have an ability called Dangerous Proximity. This trait just straight up gives the pod spawn advantage against any creature that is within 5 feet of them. Meaning that not only do they output a lot of damage, but they also have two chances to deal that damage every time they attack. The actual pod demon acts as more of a commander in this fight. Sure, it's capable of slugging it out, but it would much rather fight from a distance while it sends in its spawn to clean up the mess. So, what can the pod demon actually do from a distance? Well, quite a bit actually. The first ability, and one of my favorites, is called Detonate Minion. You can probably guess what that does, but just to clarify, it chooses one of its spawn it can see within 50 feet of it, and then causes it to explode like a bomb, dealing poison and acid damage to everything within 5 feet of it. Fortunately for your players, it does have a recharge and a dice roll of 5 or 6. But, if you can get a pod spawn into an ideal location, you're talking massive damage to multiple targets. Following that same vein of minion abuse, the pod demon can actually pick up one of its pod spawn and fling it at a square or target, creating basically the same effect. This ability does not have a recharge, however, it does require the creature to actually go to one of its spawn, physically pick it up, and throw it as an action. And of course, getting close enough to pick up a pod spawn who's in battle often means getting into the thick of things. But bringing us to our next ability, should the pod spawn find itself in the heat of battle, and most of its minions dead, it can force more of them out of its body in a torrent of acid. The generation ability allows the pod demon to create up to 4 more pod spawn and deal acid damage to everything within a 10 foot radius centered on it. Now this ability can only be used twice a day but it can change the flow of battle in an instant. Your players may think that they've got the upper hand, they're cleaning up most of the pod spawn, the only thing left is the main creature, so they all surround it and start wailing on him when all of a sudden they all take a ton of acid damage and suddenly there's four more creatures they have to fight now. On top of that, acid damage is just nasty. Now despite its grotesque appearance, pod demons are actually quite clever. Over the course of many many battles, they've learned how to best utilize their minions and capitalize on advantageous positions. If a pod demon has advantage against any creature, it gets to add extra damage dice on any attack it does against that creature. Normally, advantage is just a nice bonus to hit, but if your players learn of this either just in battle or through research, this might make them plan every move that much more carefully. Because if you're not only taking more of a chance to get hit because your opponent has advantage, and you're also taking a ton of extra damage every time they have advantage, you're not going to want to give them advantage. Now, if you don't play with flanking rules, you might consider adding flanking rules just for this monster because of its very tactile nature, but you don't necessarily have to do that, and this ability kind of becomes a moot point if you don't play with flanking rules. 
That said though, there still are ways for it to gain advantage without just being on the opposite side of one of its spawn. In a game where you're not using flanking rules, I would really try to put emphasis on ambush tactics. That way the pod demon gets to use its ability at least once before the encounter truly begins. Plus, coming out strong and swinging and doing a ton of damage against one of the PCs will definitely crank up the tension immediately. Now, it wouldn't be a true demon in D&D if it didn't have at least one trick up its sleeve. And this final ability has so much potential for combat shenanigans, I actually debated on raising the CR of the monster by one or even two levels just because of this alone. The pod demon possesses an ability called Transfer Essence. This essentially allows it to transfer its consciousness into one of its minions, and then its minion's consciousness into its own body. This causes the new body to grow into the pod demon, and its original body shrinks down to the size of the pod's spawn. That's pretty cool, right? This essentially allows the pod demon to switch places with any of its minions that are within 50 feet as a bonus action. I think this ability is incredible. Just imagine this. The players have the pod demon knocked all the way down to just a few hit points left and they think they've pretty much got him surrounded and outflanked. He's only got one pod spawn left and he's kind of off to the side. So the pod demon switches places with his spawn as a bonus action. Then he uses his action to detonate the pod demon causing massive damage to all the players and then he can still move and try to run away and escape. That's crazy. Plus, your players will not see that coming. And speaking of escape, if the pod demon's in a situation where it just needs to get away, it can easily leapfrog itself from minion to minion to minion, also moving every round, and of course leaving behind a trail of pod spawn to slow down the players while it makes its getaway. The pod demon is such an interesting creature, and if it doesn't make your players run away in disgust immediately, it can lead to some pretty interesting encounters. These guys, like pretty much every demon, make excellent inhabitants for any of the layers of the Nine Hells or equivalent in your game. Also, they can make really cool summoned monsters for evil warlocks or wizards. As far as goals and aspirations go for these guys, they don't really seem to have any. They seem to be related in some way to the Chained God, which basically means that they just live for chaos and destruction, kind of like gnolls. If you happen to be using the Chained God or any other chaotic evil deity as a main influence in your game, Pod demons make great servants for those beings. Fortunately though, as one of the lesser known demons in the D&D universe, you could basically repurpose them for pretty much anything you want. You could even remove the demon aspect of them and just use it as some sort of revolting swamp creature. Maybe the pod demon is just what the locals have come to call the crazy looking monster that just haunts the nearby fringes of the swamp around their village. One final piece of advice I would like to offer on running an encounter with a pod demon is this. Use a grid. If you already use a grid, that's great, no worries. If you don't, I would recommend at least giving it a try. I don't always use a grid myself, and I get that that's not everyone's style, so I don't feel like I'm telling you you have to use a grid because you don't, but just given the nature of this monster and how it relies so heavily on combat tactics and advantage, using a grid can make an encounter like this a lot more engaging and ultimately more intense. That said, I'm sure you could easily run this encounter in the theater of the mind, but, like every other 4th edition creature, wizards made the pod demon with the grid in mind. Because in 4th edition, the grid was just a part of life. You had to use it. I mean, I'm sure there are people who didn't, but you're supposed to use a grid in 4th edition. I mean, literally, the movement speed is calculated in squares, not in feet. Anyways, if you don't usually use a grid, I think it's at least worth giving it a chance, and who knows, maybe you'll like it more than you think. Whether you end up using a grid or not, I think the pod demon is a really cool monster that can create some really memorable encounters and will fit in just about any campaign. If you do end up using this monster, or maybe you have had a DM use this on you in the past, please let me know about it in the comments. I'd love to see some feedback on maybe some ideas you have about running these monsters or possible changes you'd make. Hopefully you enjoyed learning about the monster with the worst case of acne in the multiverse, and if you did, please feel free to subscribe. I have at least one new video every week where we talk about monsters, monster of the week, and time willing, maybe some other videos in the near future. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.